Hello, hello. Welcome back. Okay, so today's lesson is all about evaluating a function. So being able to plug in an x value when you get out your y value. Um, and then also taking an equation and transforming it into a table and a graph. Um, for today, by the end of the day, I do want you to be able to look at an equation, make your table and graph. That is like a very key thing I need you to be able to take away from today. All right. So evaluating an exponential function. We have a nice little example here to look at. So we have the function 2, 3, the x models an insect population after x date. So what will the population be on the fifth day? So the key thing here is that we are given our equation, okay? And I'm asking what is the population on the fifth day? And x represents dates. So, and instead of having x for our days, we know that 5 is how many days we have. So we're going to go ahead and plug in that x value for x and then solve. So remember your order of operations here parentheses, and then exponents, and then multiplication, and then division, our lovely PEMDAS. So we solve with exponents first. So we need to do 3 to the 5th first in our calculator. And if you plug in 3 to the 5th, you get 243. And now we can do that multiplication. So the key thing when evaluating exponents is, or evaluating exponential functions is number one, like making sure you plug in your value into the correct spot for x. And then you um, do your um, exponent first, your exponent with your base, and then the multiplication. So we could say there it was how many insects will we have is the population. The population is 486. Okay. So now we have the function f of x equals 1500 times 0.995 to the x, where x is, again, our time in years. And this model is a prairie dog population. Um, how many prairie dogs will there be in eight years? So go ahead and think to yourself, well, where am I going to plug in the eight? In for what? In for x. Because x is the time in years, and we're in eight years. So I can go ahead and say 1,500 times 0.995 to the eight. And I'm going to find what that equals. So first, again, we do exponents. Bum, bum, bum. So I'm going to do 0.995. Ooh, how do I do exponents on here? Ooh, I don't know if I can do it on here. Maybe I have to, ah, scientific. Sorry, maybe. Okay, so we're going to do 0.995 to the 8th power. And we get this crazy decimal. I'm going to just say 0.96. So now we have 1500.96. And now we multiply those. Let me just double check that that looks good. Yep. So now we'll take that number and times by the 1500. And we get 1441.039565. Okay. This question was saying, how many prairie dogs do we have? I can't have 0 0.0395 of a prairie dog, so I am just going to keep this number, 1441. And that's my answer. How many prairie dogs? We'll have 1,441 prairie dogs after eight years. Okay, so again, key thing for these evaluating exponents, you're taking that x value, plugging it in for x, do your exponent first, and then multiply by your starting value. Now something about this one, 
when we look at these two equations here, my multiplier for this one is 3, and that's greater than 1. So what does that mean about my population? It means my population is growing. Remember, if our multipliers are bigger than 1, that means my population is experiencing a growth. If my population is less, or if my multiplier is less than 1, that means that we are in a decay. My numbers should be decreasing. So I know this should be a growth. We started with 2, now I'm at 486. So there definitely was a big growth here. And then if we look at this one about the prairie dogs, my number is less than 1. So that tells me this should be a decay. So my final answer should be less than what we started with. Well, my starting value was 1,500. Now I'm at 1,441. So you can think about it in like this logic way and know that, okay, I got the right answer. If this was like a multiple choice problem on a test and you had A, B, C, D here and you had 6,000, 100, 1,441, and then we'll say, I don't know, 2,000. Okay. Well, again, I notice this is less than 1, so I know my population is decreasing. My official or my original population was 1,500, so any number bigger than that, I could get rid of. So 6,000 is bigger. It can't be that because I should be shrinking. Same for 2,000. 2,000 is bigger than 1,500. And then now I could go ahead and calculate um, or take your best estimated guess from here. Okay. Go ahead and try this one. So you have the function f of x equals 0.75 to the x models the width of a photograph in inches um, after it has been reduced x amount of times. What is the width after it's been reduced three times? Go ahead, pause me, and take a minute and see if you can solve this. All right, so we have x is times, and we have 3. So we're going to plug that in. And again, 0.75 is less than 1, so in the end I should have a smaller number. Uh, let's clear this guy. Okay, again, do the exponent first, so 0.75 to the third. We get 0.42, I'll round up to 2. And we get 3.375. And this says it's the width in inches, so I'm going to just go ahead and add inches. But if you got that number, really nice job. If you didn't, what happened? Did you plug it into the wrong place? Did you multiply first and then use the exponent? Or do you just not know how to enter in an exponent into your calculator? If you need help, please let me know. Okay, now let's move on. So now evaluating a function and graphing. So the one thing I like about these are there's two ways we can go about creating our table here. So we have our x values y values. So I'm plugging in different inputs and I want to see what I get out. Almost always when you're creating a table from a function, start with zero. That's the easiest thing to start with and it's easy to remember. Just start with plugging in zero and then plug in one and then plug in two and so on. Remember zero is our initial value, that's our starting point, so start there. Okay. Now here are the two ways you can solve it. This is your x value. So just like we did in these equations up here, you could take your x and plug it in and then solve for y. So if we plug in 0, that's going to be 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. And we would get out a 2. But... Oh, actually, I'll keep going. So then my x value is 1. So then I could take 1 and plug it in and then figure out what I get out. 
But let me show you this. Let's say I didn't want to plug my values in. Well, remember, we have two pieces of information here. We have our A value and we have our B value, our starting value and our multiplier. Our starting value is 2. Remember, when x is 0, that y value that's with it is our starting value. So if we start our table with 0 for our x, 2 is our starting value. And we can just plug 2 in there. And then now to go the rest of the way, we know what we're multiplying by. We have my multiplier. So again, we had our starting value. Key thing is it's when x is 0. So you want to start with 0 and then use that value for y. And now my multiplier is 2. So I'm going to times 2, times 2, times 2. I think this way is a lot easier than trying to plug it in, but some of you might think differently. If that makes sense to you to plug your numbers in and then figure out what you get out, do it that way. If it makes sense of you, if it makes sense to you to say, oh, my starting value is 2, that's x is 0, and then just go 1, 2, 3, and then use your multiplier, do it that way. And now we can go ahead and graph. One thing I notice is that my multiplier is bigger than 2 or bigger than 1, so this should be a growth. So we should see that nice J shape where it rockets up towards the sky. And let's just see if we get that. So 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 16. And indeed, that's exactly what it's doing. It's rocketing up towards the sky. Pause me if you need to get that down again. And I'm going to keep going. Let's work on this one now. So we have a different function here. Again, I'm going to start the same way. X is 0, 1, 2, 3. Easiest way to start. Okay. What number am I going to put here with my 0? What's my starting value? What's my A value for my equation? 2. And now my multiplier is 1 half. So each time, we're going to cut it in half. One half of 2 is 1. Half of 1 is 1 half. If you take half of a pizza, you have half left. And then we're down to one-fourth, and we'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. You need to be able to take an equation, make a table, and plot at least three points. At least three. So now we can go ahead and graph. Again, here I see less than one for my multiplier, so I'll de see a decay. I should see something that slants towards zero and kind of like an L shape. So let's give it a try. 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, and 1 half. Ooh, so now I'm in the middle of the box. And then 3, oh, we're going real small. And we can see that it's doing exactly that. Approaching 0, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so before I let you go, Again, a couple of key points here. To solve an exponential equation, simply plug in your x value for x, multiply, and do your, or sorry, plug in your x value, do your exponent first, plug that into your calculator. 3 to the 5th first, 0.995 to the 8th first, 0.75 to the 3 first, and then do the multiplication. For graphing, make your table, start by going 0, 1, 2, 3, Plug in your starting value, 2, and then use your multiplier to find the rest. 2 times my multiplier is 2 equals 4. 4 times 2 is 8. You have independent practice. You're starting with that first and then some review.